You're listening to ABC News. Here's Dr. Gil Lederman, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board certified radiation cancer doctor. If chemo surgery or radiation isn't working or isn't tolerated when cancer and its pain and symptoms aren't getting better, seek a fresh second opinion at Radio Surgery New York's Urgent Cancer Consultants for innovative, custom-tailored cancer treatment. See our experts within one business day because we know your time and your life are precious. Our goal is proper diagnosis and effective, non-invasive outpatient treatment. Decades of leadership, first in New York with brain radio surgery, first in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate, all custom-tailored for you. Call 212-CHOICES, 212-CHOICES for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212 Choices. 212 Choices. 1991, my father, who you know I adored. We just lost him a year and a half ago. We brought him to Dr. Lederman. You need to bring yourself or someone you know who needs to have the barnacle scraped off their backside to get their rear in gear and walk in there right now because Dr. Gil Lederman is New York's only triple board certified Harvard-trained radiation oncologist, first brought the non-invasive stereotactic body radio surgery to America, and he's got the longest experience treating cancer using radio surgery. So look. Do yourself a favor. If it's cancer-related, and I'm talking breast, lung, pancreas, liver, kidney, cancers, and more, you got to bring it to Dr. Gil Lederman. He'll send you an informative booklet, DVD. You watch it first. You read. You sit down one-on-one with Dr. Lederman. And then you prepare for what it is you want to do and you should be doing. Just call Dr. Gil Lederman at 212 Choices. Set up that appointment today. 212 Choices or set it up for someone you know won't do it for themselves. At 212 Choices, that's 212 Choices. Welcome, everybody. It's the Radio Surgery Show with Dr. Gil Lederman, M.D., New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board-certified radiation oncologist who brings you the latest cancer treatment news, interviewing world-renowned cancer experts, delving to special cases, and, of course, answering your questions. I'm Rob Redstone, broadcasting from the WABC studios in the heart of New York City. And now, please welcome Dr. Lederman. Hi, good morning. Hope you're up and... uh... Ready for another day, hopefully getting warmer as uh, the weather changes here in New York. I'm Dr. Gil Lederman, MD, medical doctor, not a cockamamie doctor. I hope not. We work at Radio Surgery New York, which is at 1384 Broadway, Broadway and 38th Street. We're right in the heart of New York by Macy's and Times Square, so it's easy to get to a spacious, modern cancer treatment center. These are the questions people often ask, so that's why I'm talking about them this morning. A private cancer center means that we work for you. It's not sponsored by a drug company that's giving us tens of millions of dollars in exchange of uh, drug protocols that we're supposed to push and may not even be that effective or may not be effective at all, as we'll see in the program today. We're going to be talking about some of those drug protocols and how the expectations of them are so low even their doctors want to try to have a improved level of expectations. But a private cancer center means we try to find the best cancer treatment for you. So it's not sponsored by drug companies. There's no hidden hands or hidden dollars coming in pushing patients to get chemo or something they don't want. We just had a patient, which we'll talk about during the program too, a woman with pancreas cancer, had metastatic pancreas cancer, Stage four, it started in the pancreas, got in the bloodstream, and went to the liver. And she went to different cancer hospitals and other hospitals. She's adamant against receiving chemotherapy. And everywhere she went, she saw chemo doctors. And you can imagine chemo doctors kind of sometimes see the world like hammers see nails. And she just couldn't get any other options until she uh, called us yesterday. So I told her, no, we're not bait and switch. We talk about all the options, and there are other options that are very effective. This woman had a 9-centimeter mass in the, in the liver, 
that was secondary to pancreas cancer. So the cancer started in the pancreas. It got in the bloodstream, often for pancreas cancer. The next step is the liver. And this woman is suffering from that metastasis because it's so big and so critically located. So that's the beauty of radiosurgery, whether it's in the pancreas or the liver or the lung or the bone or the brain or the uh, kidney or the prostate or the lymph nodes. We're able to target the cancer. We were the first ones in America to do stereotactic body radiosurgery, and we brought this technology here because there were so many patients like her that were suffering from a particular site or having bleeding. And we know that if we focus the beam on the cancer and try to avoid the healthy tissues, we can dial up the dose, which means you can make the dose higher, more effective. And we know there's radiobiologic or scientific principles that say that if you increase the dose, you can give fewer treatments and you have increased effectiveness. For example, in lung cancer, where standard radiation will have a, an effectiveness rate of about 50%, we're at about 90%. Or for that woman who has pancreas cancer, whether it's in the pancreas or the liver, where we aim the beam, our success rate in stopping the cancer is about 90%. So there are reasons for her to come in. And I told her daughter that, that it's best to come in as my grandfather told me 50 years ago when he used to see his doctor, he'd tell the doctor, Doc, come in the room, close the door, sit down, and stay a while. And I think that advice that he gave his doctor, and he used to tell me when I was 10 years old as a little boy in Iowa, still holds. Doc, come in, close the door, sit down, and spend some time together. And I think that way you can get a sense of the patient, you can examine the patient, you can know what's happened, you can review the test, your attention isn't drawn somewhere else. So many people come and say their doctor only spent a minute or two minutes with them. They barely had a chance to answer, ask and answer questions. And then if they needed to contact the doctor, they could barely get a phone call in or email. We're the opposite, again, because we're a private cancer center responsive to you. You're the boss, not some strange drug company in Cincinnati. So you get to speak directly to the board-certified doctor, not students, interns, not machines. And that means you get answers and not confusion. So... We're live today at the WABC studios. Our number is 800-848-9222. Again, we're live. If you have questions, we're at 800-848-9222. So there's headlines today. There's headlines right in the news from 3,000 years ago. So can you imagine cancer was there 3,000 years ago? I've heard some people say, oh, there wasn't cancer in the old days. If, if there was, we'd know about it. We'd read about it. This is all our society. Well, maybe, maybe not. There's an article from London that British archaeologists have discovered the world's oldest complete example of a human being with metastatic cancer. And they're hopeful that this will offer new clues about cancer, even cancer that now is detected in an adult from 3,000 years ago. Now, the researchers from the British Museum found evidence of the cancers that had developed and spread throughout the body in a 3,000-year-old skeleton in a tomb in Sudan in 2013. So this person lived in that area of the world, which is occupied in the neighborhood of Egypt, which we know had uh, uh, civilization, pyramids, Cleopatra, had a fairly modern uh, uh, society for their times 3,000 years ago. They analyzed the skeleton using x-rays and uh, electron microscope, and they were able to get clear images of the tumors or the cancers on the bones, which showed that the 
cancer had spread to multiple bones, including the sco- co- collarbones, scapula, clavicles, shoulder blades, upper arms, vertebrae, ribs, pelvis, and thigh bones. So if you think about it, it was a male. They believe it's a male, so um, there's various possibilities of what kind of cancer that was. First of all, now we know that there was cancer. There was not much doubt about it that most diseases happened back then, but in different proportions. When more people died of infectious diseases and other diseases that have in many ways been diminished uh, in frequency compared to today. So cancer had been virtually absent in archaeologic records compared to other diseases, and that gave rise to the idea that cancers were attributed to modern lifestyles and to patients, people living longer. Nowadays, cancer cases rose to 14 million a year in the year 2012, and it's expected to rise to 22 million cases within 20 years. So cancer is increasing. Some of it's due to the population, us baby boomers. Some of it's due to lifestyle, cigarettes spreading in the second and third world uh, with uh, poorer countries taking up this habit, which is not a good habit. Uh, The skeleton that we're talking about was an adult male, thought to be somewhere between 25 and 35 years old, which is probably the lifespan back then. It was found at an archaeological site called Amara West in northern Sudan, about 750 kilometers, or about 500 miles south from Khartoum, the capital. The researchers could only speculate what may have caused the young man's cancer. Some said it might have been environmental, like smoke from wood fires or genetic factors, or an infectious disease like schistosomiasis, which is a parasite, and that can cause chronic inflammation of the bladder and cancer. Still does. So the headline news from 3,000 years ago, cancer was here then, still here. We're fighting it, actually... In many ways, the survival is improving. Uh, Let's keep fighting. Uh, If it's due to smoking, that's a great reason to stop smoking. If you have questions, call us at the WABC studios. We are at 800-848-9222. So we had a patient come in this week, more than one, of course. This gentleman's 58. He's a photographer. He's one of the photographers you see out Inside the museums in New York, he takes pictures of New York, or New York, and sells them to tourists, American and overseas tourists. And he's outside a lot, selling these photographs. And guess what? What would you think happens to someone who's very fair complected, blue eyes, very pale skin? Yes, he developed a skin cancer from all that sun exposure. So he had a skin cancer in his cheek. He was seen by uh, an assistant to the physician, not a physician, who did a scraping, and he was diagnosed with squamous cancer, which is one of the main cancers of the skin. And he's worried about it. He was actually diagnosed two years ago and thought he'd scrape it and that would be it. But the problem with scraping is scraping leaves the roots of the cancer there, and now two years later it's just growing back. And obviously in the face, when it grows back, it can cause deformity. And surgery, which is a common treatment for skin cancers, can cause even more of a deformity. Often Mohs, M-O-H apostrophe S, Mohs surgery is used, which takes multiple layers and multiple layers until there's no more cancer cells to try to get the last cancer cell surgically. That often leads to great deformities and a great amount of tissue lost. So this man heard about our program with our radiation program and our radio program, and decided to come in. I examined him, took a history. Uh, We identified the area. We got the pathology and offered treatment to try to cure him. Cure means, in this case, that we treat the cancer so it never comes back. So we're going to try to cure him in a way that keeps him intact. And we often say that 
skin cancers in the face area, especially around the eyes, nose, mouth, 